Hello everyone. My name is Saye and standing next to my beautiful cup plant, I'm going to take you on a little tour of the native plants that have been growing in my Toronto garden this past year. My garden started out as a typical Toronto garden with all grass and not much else. And over the past 14 years, I've turned it into a sustainable garden with a mix of native and naturalized plants where I only water it when there's a drought. I use my messy gardening philosophy with lots of places for insects to shelter. My joy in gardening comes from not just the plants, but the amazing creatures I find in it. Like this dragonfly, inchworm, tree hopper. I'd been wondering about the circles in my red butt, and this was the year that after a three hour stakeout, I managed to spot this amazing leaf cutter bee. So worth it. I'm going to share some of my native favorites with you today. I start my journey in spring with this liverwort I bought, of course, at the Knapp Spring Sale a few years back. And it's actually a hybrid, so it's got these amazing pastel colors that pop up among the shriveled leaves from last year. And as the days heat up, it fades away and just produces leaves. Another favorite of mine is this Canadian wild ginger, which creeps in the woodland section. Those little bumps at the bottom of the leaves become the most spectacular and glorious flowers that only you know are there. So it's a little bit of a secret. And I got this two inch pot solely based on the name, Pussy Toes. Of course, it looks like beautiful little kitten paws. And over the past couple of years, it's grown to about a square foot patch. One morning, everything just turns into fluff and started blowing away. This purple sage came with the house and it's been quite amazing as the bees just flock to it. And it's got the most beautiful purple spikes. Surprisingly, this year, the blazing star did not do much. So it was a little sad but the year before, it was another story. It bloomed forever and the butterflies could not resist it. But something that did do well this year was Blue Vervain. And I have a couple of shots, but I never quite got a lot of pollinators on it. So of course, a staple of my garden has to be the milkweeds. While I already loved my butterfly weed and swamp milkweed quite a bit, I never really got into the common milkweed until this year. I was just growing it out of a sense of duty to the monarch butterflies. But when I spent a little bit of time and got some close up of the flowers, they were quite exquisite. Um, I fell in love with it. It's quite something else. My butterfly weeds continue to surprise me the most because the flowers comes up in all different shades of yellow and orange. And uh, this shot with pure green uh, sweat bee was just such a nice color combination. And then I caught this bee doing this cute wiggly dance, which turned out to be its way of transferring pollen from its uh, legs to its abdomen. So quite cute. Midsummer has to be dedicated to my native bee balm, another plant from our sale. In just a couple of years, it's become this buffet of all different pollinators. And uh, since we can't go to buffets in the middle of this pandemic, I've lived vicariously through the pollinators, uh, visiting these uh, buffets that I've set up for them in my garden. Everybody's welcome. And it's got something for everyone, different size bees. It's just uh, the variety that I saw on it was just spectacular. My tick seed is another reliable bloomer that just blooms throughout summer, as long as you deadhead it. And it just grows somewhere and it's just adorable. And probably the cutest shot that I got was of the stick seed with the uh, three bees sharing it for the night. That was adorable. End of summer seems to be just the time for my yellow bloomers. And the first one I want to share with you is this cut leaf cone flower. Now, the cone flower starts out with these really smooth cones and, uh, and they become all fuzzy. But the long bloom period has given me some of my best shots. And 
I never realized what a pollinator magnet it was until this year. It's just the bees just never seem to get enough of it. And it's always busy. I'll throw in a few adorable shots of my Susans, both black-eyed and brown-eyed for good measure. But another yellow plant that's been really good has been my cup plant. And what first attracted me to it was a story of how the leaves form cups that hold water. And I grew this from a seed and the closest I've ever seen it being used as a cup was this shot, but uh, I still love it. And this year I no noticed that there were some half-eaten seed heads, so even though I haven't seen them, I know birds have been snacking on it. And of course, my wing stem was another one of the buffet flowers where uh, completely visited by pollinators throughout the end of summer. And when all else ends, my Canadian goldenrod comes to the rescue. It is so underappreciated and as a supplier of premium nectar for all pollinators out there, including the wasps, I think it deserves more recognition. And in case you're wondering why I submitted this video so late, I was waiting for my last amazing native plant, my aster, to bloom. And now it's in full bloom, so here's the finishing shot. This aster will continue blooming right until frost. It is not in its prime yet, probably in another two weeks. It will just keep buzzing and blooming and it is fantastic. And this is how I would like to end this video. Thanks for taking a look at my garden. Looking forward to seeing you all at the AGM. Take care now. Bye.